forth. When, when I think of spring bursting forth, I think of the leaf buds unfolding, and I, I think of the beauty and the fragrance of the forsythia and the crocuses and all of those yummy smelling flowers that come early and that we get to appreciate after the long winter. I absolutely appreciate about spring the, the fact that the days are getting longer, Sometimes we see those pretty little robin's eggs and the gentle, gentle warmth of the sun. And I don't know about you, but I'm already feeling that spring energy, you know, that energy that makes me want to open the doors and windows and and let the fresh air into all the nooks and crannies of our center and at home and of my mind so that new ideas and new ways of thinking can, can come and can burst forth into my life and create newness. Long before the time of Jesus, um, celebrations of spring were, and renewal were, uh, were celebrated. They took place. Historians, including bi- biblical scholars, just absolutely agree that, um, that originally Easter was a pagan holiday. Um, early Christian leaders pragmatically adopted that. Uh, the, they adopted a number of pagan practices and festivities and, and gave them Christian meanings. Um, the story of death and rebirth, of overcoming the darkness, of coming out of that winter time, that is a story that was oft told in the ancient world. Not a new story. Many resurrection stories um, were told. uh, And they were associated, of course, with springtime. Because that's when things are coming alive. That's what Easter is, a celebration of spring. So the word Easter is believed to come from the from the name um, of Istra or Ustra, the goddess of spring. And it seems that people have always intuitively known that regeneration and renewal are part of our life cycle, part of our life cycle. I mean, we live on a planet where, where the, the seasons are reliable, well, somewhat, re- you know, somewhat reliable. We know that spring follows winter every year that time of renewal, and we can absolutely trust that. And because we feel that that awakening, that newness within our own selves, within our own bodies and our physiology, um, then there have always been and there will always be um, celebrations of spring. And of course, many of our traditional um, symbols of Easter go back thousands of years, thousands of years. There are eggs and chicks. And um, many of the ancient cultures viewed eggs as a symbol of life. In fact, the um, Hindus and Egyptians and Persians, they believed that the world began with a big egg, a huge egg. So that fits into many of their their stories and legends. And the Persians and Greeks and Chinese, long, long, long ago, gave eggs as gifts at springtime festivities. Some of them even colored their eggs. They, however, didn't have plastic ones. (laughs) Uh, I mean, these are some really nice colors, you know, really nice colors. Uh, Nothing symbolizes um, renewal more perfectly than an egg. It's that smoothness, it's endless, and it, it contains new life. It contains new life. And the chick, of course, hatching out of the egg is an amazing symbol for, for rebirth or um, for new life, new life. And within the last century, Easter lilies have um, come to represent Easter. They've come to represent the resurrection. They've come to represent um, this springtime Easter celebration. And then, of course, there's that sacred symbol, the chocolate Easter bunny. (laughs) Yeah. Now, rabbits um, or hares um, have, have... 
been considered fertility symbols for, for hundreds, thousands of years because they reproduce so enthusiastically and so prolifically. <laughs> and um, the rabbit or hare is also a symbol for the moon. It has been a symbol in ancient times for the moon. And so its connection with Easter is that the date of Easter um, is dependent upon the moon. And um, I think it's the first Sunday after the first full, don't say after the Super Bowl, <laughs> after the vernal equinox. <laughs> and so the date changes from year to year, and it's, it's not necessarily consistent with Passover either. Um, they're, they're on two different, two different systems there. Um, but the, the pagan date thing certainly helped the rabbit as a, as a symbol of the moon to be accepted as, as, a, um, as an Easter symbol. And the, the early Christian leadership, of course, gave new meaning to that. Um, as, the, as the hare was seen... Now, rabbits, they stay above ground. That's where they live. Hares, the original ones that were Easter was about, they, they burrow under the ground. And so... As, as early believers saw the hares coming out from their underground burrows, they, they related to that to Jesus coming out of the tomb, to Jesus coming out of the tomb. So rabbits, of course, are a symbol of fertility and new life. And then there's chocolate. Now, this is not an ancient symbol, chocolate, <laughs> but... It's one that we can use because, you know, it reminds us of the sweetness of spirit. It reminds us of the, the sweetness of things coming alive in the spring. N new babies, new, new plants, new sweet little flowers, and chocolate. And so if you would like to participate in it, kind of a communion thing afterwards, the... the um, <laughs> Chocolate Easter Bunny will be in the celebration hall, and, and feel free to, to take a sacred bite of that. Yeah, feel free to break it up. Yeah. Uh -huh. Easter is a celebration of the earth coming out of the tomb of winter. It's a celebration of the resurrected Christ. Now, the word Christ comes from the word Christos, a Greek word which means anointed, and so, to be the Christ is to be the anointed one, the anointed one. Um, to be anointed literally means to have sacred oil poured over your head because God has chosen you for a special task. Because God has chosen you for a special task. Anointing reminds us that we're here because spirit lives in, through, and as us. We are here because of the, the life that spirit has imbued us with. And our special task, the special task for each one of you, is to be the unique expression of the divine. Not like anybody else letting that energy flow through you in, in ways that, that represent your brilliance and your humor and all, all that you have come to this planet to share. So God has cho chosen for you a special task. Now, anointing may be performed by a human, but, but the authority of it, the power of it, is actually divine. As Leah and I anoint you later in the service, it will be, we'll be doing it as the humans, but please know that spirit works through us, blessing you, so that as you open to that, it can, it can have deep, deep meaning for you. Um, and of course, the anointing is a sacred reminder of our inner light the sacred reminder of that life that is living us. And that inner light is our divine nature. It's the essence of who we have come here to be. 
Here's what Ernest Holmes said. The desire you have to be something, to do something, is a mental echo in your mind of the spirit which already exists within you. It is the spirit in you seeking an avenue expression th- of expression through you. It is the real self you would like to be, the deep spiritual self, having all knowledge, having access to all power, being one with life. This is the self that can heal the sick and raise the dead. It is a transcendent, triumphant self. And he also said, when we meet each other, do we not feel that subtle presence which flows through all things and gives light and color to our everyday experiences? In our own souls, in the silent processes of thought and understanding, do we not sense another presence? There is something divine about us which we have overlooked. There is more to us than we realize. So this is what we mean when we talk about the Christ consciousness. But we don't have to use the term Christ consciousness because I know that makes some people a little nervous. But we can call it the light within, the essence of you, the source of your life and your dreams and your joy. All of that. It's, It's the vision or spark that pulls you into your magnificence the sacred soul part of you that is always, always, always learning and growing and evolving, even when you're not aware of it, and even if you're resisting it. Probably nobody here has ever resisted the spirit flowing through them, but even if you're resisting it, it is that evolution that we are part of. Do you know that there's a spiritual magnificence in you? that has always been there. It is waiting to be resurrected. It is waiting to come alive again in this springtime. This spiritual magnificence that you were born with as a little baby. Think about a little baby and think about the spiritual magnificence that that comes with that, the preciousness, the vulnerability, the wonder the possibility, all of that you had when you were born and you still have. And so today, Easter, is a great time to claim that magnificence. Feel your heart. Something is ready to burst forth from your heart in this spring season. Listen. What is it? What is it that's ready to flow forth, that's ready to burst forth from your sweet heart? Maybe what's wanting to burst forth is a new way of seeing or a new way of being or a new way of opening to the love and to the support of the divine. Let's look at that. Maybe it's a new way of seeing or a new way of perceiving. Maybe instead of thinking that the way things are in our country, our country is going to hell in a handbasket and democracy is, in, is hopeless and in big trouble, maybe we can know and remember that we are collectively experiencing this evolution and that this is a process that can lead us to something greater than we can even imagine right now. It's the death that happens before the resurrection. And that's what I am claiming for this time in our, in our country. Maybe it's changing our perception to, to see our natural process of aging and not as filled with limitations but as something that that is a gift for us, that gives us opportunities to explore facets of life and spirituality that we have not heretofore explored. Maybe it's time to volunteer, time to sit in quiet contemplation, time time for spiritual practice, time for some fun things that we said we're going to do at some point. Now's the time. 
Or maybe what's being called forth is a new way of being, a new way of moving into action. Maybe it's time to, taking time to step out and serve in ways that you have been called. Or for some of us, the new way of being is slowing down. For some of us, the new way of being, for many of us, the new way of being is slowing down. Or maybe it's making a new commitment to following the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Now, I don't know if anybody knew, but this coming Thursday, April 5th, is International Golden Rule Day. And um, there, there's a website, goldenruleday.org, and it's going to have inspiring things on it, and you can check that out. I think there'll probably be um, uh, talks and, and suggestions and, and hints to help you remember the golden rule and remembering to practice that. So maybe that new way of being is a commitment to, um, to the golden rule and to living that again. There are also some little flyers out there with the website on it. I mean, could our world not use more of that? Could our world not use more of the golden rule? And maybe... Maybe what's calling to you is a new way of opening to the love and the support of the divine. It is all around us, folks. It is right here waiting for us. It knows us individually and will come to us as we are open to it. We're far more than we have ever known ourselves to be. All, all of the resources and support and love are available for us. And they're limited only by what we are able and willing to receive. So how much are you willing to open up and receive of this help and support and substance of the divine? And just as a stone needed to be rolled away so, so that Jesus could emerge from the tomb, sometimes we have stones that get in our way, things that block us from, from allowing our, our spring energy, our life, to burst forth. Maybe it's the stone of unbelief that needs to be rolled away. You know, that belief that pff, it'll never happen for me. You know, it's never happened before, and it's just not going to happen. That belief, let me tell you, that is not your highest truth, or any belief like that. It's not your highest truth, and there's no need to live in that space. Although, I have to tell you, if you continue to believe that, that is what you will experience. That is what you will experience. Um, Ernest Holmes, the Center for, Centers for Spiritual Living puts out the um, Science of Mind magazine, and they have in their daily guide, so there are readings for each day, and I loved the quote from Ernest Holmes that was in this morning's reading. He said, the resurrection is the death of the belief that we are separated from God. The resurrection is the death of the belief that we are separated from God. That's a belief that we can hang on to. Or how about the stone of undeserving? Is, is, that one, is that one that might be getting in your way? You know, that, that feeling of not being good enough? That, oh, what I want is really too much for me to ask for? That my desire is, is just, you know, that might be for somebody better than I am, but I don't know if I really deserve that. Now, that is a stone that many of us would do well to roll away down the hill and let go of. You are made of the divine. There is nothing and no one that is more valuable, more precious than you are. And so that not enoughness is something that we can simply get rid of. Or how about the stone of unwillingness? 
you know, that idea that getting what you say you want, whether it's more love in your life or a healthier bank account or the perfect job or whatever, thinking that, oh, yeah, I really want that, but boy, I just don't know if I'm willing to put in the work for all of that. Because we have to do our part. Spirit provides the resources. Spirit provides the connections. Spirit provides the opportunities. But we have to do our part. We have to ask ourselves if we're willing, if we're willing to do the work to say, um, to get what it is we say we want to get in our lives, what we want to open up to. Ernest Holmes said, God can do for us only what it can do through us. God can do for us only what it can do through us. If we're not willing to let the Spirit flow through us, we're probably not going to get what it is we really want. If I want to learn to play pickleball, I can't just sit on the couch and eat jelly beans. <laughs> right? I, I have to get out there and I have, to, I have to learn the rules and I have to practice. Now, Spirit is doing its part. I have to do my part, which is just to actually get out there and play. And so in this, in this Easter time, we are, we are invited to do our part. And often our part is playing or feels like playing because we're going with the flow. Absolutely. So what do you say? Are you willing to roll away the stone of unbelief and undeserving in order to allow the bursting forth of a new way of seeing or a new way of being? or a new way of opening to the love and the support of the divine, are you? Are you ready to allow your magnificence to burst forth in the beautiful spring season of now? Yes? Are you ready to choose love? Yes. Let's listen to Karen and the choir as they sing about that. <laughs> 